A few moments later Moments later Yes, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, tankers of Blitz Universe to the channel. My name is Martin Dogger, and today we will be taking a look at the crew skills in World of Tanks Blitz. And yes, that may not be a very appealing uh, uh, theme, that may not be a very sexy title for a video, that may not be, or it is by far an OP replay, because it's going to be just me driving around in a T-54 and then in a T-54 lightweight. But I've chosen these two tanks with a, um, with a purpose. And that is the fact that I'm collecting, I'm trying to, to get my last remaining crew skill sorted. And if you're a new player, and if you have just found my channel, and if you decided to hit that red subscribe button, you might start thinking, if you, if you are at, say, tier 4 or 5, you might start thinking, What are you talking about, Martin? I'm, I have a unified crew. It's driving all my tanks. I'm driving it in a Panzer III, in a Chi Ha, in a Chi Ni, in a, in a Hansa. What are you talking about? Yes, I know. All tanks have a unified crew. We don't have crew members in World of Tanks Blitz like they do on World of Tanks PC. But still, you have to drive a light tank to train as crew skills that are tied to a light tank. You have to drive a medium tank like I'm doing here to train the crew skills that are tied to a medium tank. You have to drive a heavy to drive the crew skills tied to a heavy and I could tell you about the tank destroyers as well but it would take too much time so I'm not going to do that um, but you get the point you get the point probably you have to have all four types of vehicles in your garage to be able to train all the types of cruise skills and as said I'll be taking a full look at all the cruise skills I give my recommendations as well but I also want to show you why having tanks on a birthday is important I'm, I have hadn't driven the T-54 in a long long time um, but I decided to drive it when I saw I had a birthday on a tank. And the reason for that is that a birthday on a tank, a seasonal milestone, gives you double credits and gives you five times the XP. I don't need the base XP on my T-54, but what I do need is the crew skills. And I'm trying to go for track shot on that IS-7, because tracks give, track shots give you added XP, you share the XP with your teammates. So using track shots will give you a little bit of added crew XP as well. And let me swap straight towards the end result screen. And as you can see, I've left out the little uninspiring bit in the, in the middle where I was just driving around, uh, doing absolutely nothing and getting wrecked. But what I wanted to show you is this. And this is the XP screen, combat XP in there. Uh, you can see the free XP. And you can also see that I've managed to grab 6520 in terms of crew XP and with boosters 12240. So let me show you now where you can find the crew skills. So as mentioned, you need to have a light, a medium, a heavy and a tank destroyer in your garage to be able to train the crew skills that are tied to that certain type of vehicle. And there are five crew skills for each type of tank. These are the ones for the light tanks. This level is for the mediums, this is the heavy line, and then we have the tank destroyer line over here. And all these crew skills that are fairly self-explanatory. As you can see, this one, fast capture, increases the base capture speed by 7%, and if you capture it together with an ally who has this skill, additionally increases speed by 10%. And if you have, I think you can have a maximum of three in total in there. Um, that's how this crew skill works. Um, mediums get rage, penetration boost, as you can see, mentor, smooth ride and they finish up with smooth turret traverse 
and then you have the crew skills for your heavy tanks being robustness, close combat master, firefighting, adrenaline rush, repairs, and sniper, deadly accuracy, camouflage, clutch breaking, and smooth turn. These are the crew skills meant for tank destroyers. Um, I'm not going to show you games where everything is being used. That would be, well, bad, I think. But I can tell you what crew skills are the best, in uh, my opinion. This one is the best to start training on your light tanks. Why is that? Um, take a look down below here. Mastered skills are effective for all types of vehicles with any level of crew mastery. It, it doesn't matter if you have a tank sitting at 50% or 100% or, or 75 in between or anywhere between 50 and 100 in terms of training. These skills affect the statistics and the, the way your crew behaves in any vehicle. And I've trained all these skills up to level 7. This is my press account, which means all the skills are trained up to level 7. I only need to do this one, the uh, fast capture, on my main account. The rest is all trained up towards level 7. And you can see what it does in terms of effect. You see that? I mean, if, I'm, if I've just started training this skill, then firing three shots in a row and causing damage with each shot, not just track shots, you have to cause damage, uh, you will get a 5% chance of causing maximum damage with the next shot. I have a 35% chance. It takes a really long chunk of games to train these skills, as you can see. Um, but we'll get to that later once we get to the heavy skills. But if you look at this, it is already obvious that having a trained crew is a huge advantage if you are playing a game. And Precision Fire, that is the one to go for, in my opinion, first, if you are driving a light tank. Then I would go for either this one, the soft recoil, or the breakthrough, because this is really good. It is most useful for vehicles engaged, actively engaged in offensive combat, which means light tanks and medium tanks, hence it is a light tank skill. Hasty shot, well, I'm not quite sure what it does, but um, I think I've trained it already, and, and this one is maybe the least useful. It can be somewhat useful, in my opinion, on, uh, on supremacy, but the effect is not that big, as you can see. Right, those are the, uh, the light tank skills. If you are a new player and only have time to start really training one skill, this is the one I would go for. And after that, train this one and, and the rest just tag along as you play light tanks. Right, the medium tanks, we have the Rage, Penetration Boost, Mentor, Smooth Ride and Smooth Toe Traverse. And you will have to, or you will have to, you will want to train this one, Mentor. Why is that? It increases crew XP earned in battle by 7% once fully trained. It increases crew XP earned in battle by 1% if you don't have it uh, fully trained, if you have level 1. But if you have this one fully trained, that means that all these little skills over here, you can gather, uh, accumulate crew XP quicker. So that is a real good thing to do, in my opinion. We have this one as well, Rage. It only works if you've destroyed an enemy vehicle, so I put that one down on the list. Penetration boost provides a 7% chance of scoring hit with increased armor penetration. When the skill is activated, penetration is 1 to 105 of the value shown in vehicle characteristics, and normally it's 95 to 105. So, yeah, I would put these two in spot 4 and 5. Manta obviously being number 1, and this one smooth right or smooth toe traverse. These are pretty good. I would go for smooth turret traverse first because it is useful for firing vehicles, for vehicles firing on a move. Uh, I like that. But these two really add to your gun handling. And the smooth turret traverse adds 14%, whereas the uh, gunner's portion, the driving on the move, that uh, adds uh, or decreases 7%. So I would go for this one. While you're sitting still, just turning the turret, it decreases the gun bloom. Very much useful. This is the one to go for first, and after that, go for smooth turret traverse. Righty, have you been taking notes? You can always rewind the video and subscribe, of course, but let's hop on towards the heavy tanks. Asset, robustness, close combat master, firefighting, adrenaline rush and repairs this is the one to go for definitely and if you have gone for that as well do pick this one to add the repair box 30% to module speed do that 
add this with the repair skill you will be able to repair your tracks so much faster that's why some people are able to repair quickly and others are just not look at that 28 percent brilliant brilliant um after having that one i'd go for this one close combat master increases turret traverse by seven percent if there's an enemy within a 30 meter radius radius of your vehicle and adrenaline rush that is coming on in handy when you are um, well into the end of the battle usually firefighting useful might be a third one uh, in total and robustness yeah i mean you have to play the heavy tanks and they do add to it but i think this one is a must number one for me number two number three tied in place number five tank destroy skills We've got Sniper, Deadly Accuracy, Camouflage, Clutch Breaking and Smooth Turn. This is the one to go for. Camouflage. Increases vehicle concealment by 21% and yes that even works on a KV-4 or on, a, or on an E-100 or on a mouse. You will still get spotted by a light tank or a medium tank but they will spot you a little bit, a little bit later. But if you have, for example, a Jagdpanzer 4 or an E25 or uh, uh, an Object 268, if they already have a really good camel value, then this one adds just volumes to that camel value. This is the one to go for on the tank destroyer line. This one's funny as well. It, it's only useful in the late games because you have to be the last remaining tank alive, but 7% extra view range added to you having a tank with top modules and a 100% crew and optics and then this 7% that means you will be able to outspot enemies provided you don't drive around like a muppet so i would go for camouflage and then maybe this one deadly accuracy or i would go for clutch breaking for me deadly accuracy and clutch breaking are tied number two because this one increases vehicle travel speed by 7% and as said it works for all types of vehicles so training this skill works on a heavy as well if you're more of a heavy player you could argue that, that using clutch braking would be a good one as well but for me this is number one these are tied for number two then add this one as well decrease gun dispersion of a turning vehicle by 7% and then sniper and um, yeah never been able to figure out how and when this one works sometimes the icon just pops up but i got no clue basically i never said i know everything about the game i'm just trying to pass on my knowledge anyways um this is the game that basically started this video driving the t-54 lightweight on yamato harbor because it's a light tank i have a birthday on it which means that i can really churn in those crew xp points and having these birthdays and having the boosters um, coupled to them, that really adds your crew XP. And you could argue that you don't really need Mentor anymore. But if you're going to use Mentor and then also use the birthdays and also the boosters, truckloads. Truckloads of crew XP coming in. Um, as said, I have one last remaining crew skill to be done. I'm training level 7 on fast capture. Battles remaining. 1195 what that's a lot yes but it, it's it's just for having just single gates basically it, it's it's not on an average it's not calculating the average on the amount of games i've done it's basically saying well you need to play 1195 games if you would get like the normal value of your crew skills and i do get more using the boosters using uh, birthdays etc what you can do, however, to help is accelerate your crew skills. And there's a button in the uh, bottom right corner of the screen if you're in the, in the crew area of your vehicle. And if you press the accelerate button, you're presented with a screen that says you can accelerate skill training using Elite XP only, levels 1 to 4, or in combination with credits or gold. So on levels 1 to 4, one, sorry, 1 to 5 of training your crew you can use elite xp and elite xp you get that from driving uh, premium vehicles straight away or when you have researched all the modules on your tank and all the adjacent tanks as well which means that if you um, if you complete the grind on the lttp and you've unlocked the t54 lightweight 
it becomes an elite vehicle. And that XP is, well, you can't use it to get another tank. So it kind of accumulates and just stacks up until a big pile of unused XP. But that elite XP, you can use it to accelerate your crew training if you're on level 1, 2, 3, 4 or maximum of 5. Or if you use credits or gold, then you can accelerate them even uh, quicker. And yes, that is indeed useful. Of course, you can accelerate stuff uh, by using gold, but you will still need to have elite XP. So it's not just a matter of buying your crews, because you still have to play a fair bit. But as said, I've done my recommendation on the crew skills. I've shown you what's the best way to grind them. Use the birthdays, ladies and gentlemen, tanks of this universe, because they give you a truckload of credits but also in terms of xp and yes these boosters they are not appealing in you when you get them or you or you should buy them but you can get them from the free containers in the game so put them to good use use those crew xp boosters get that crew xp rolling in train your crew and be victorious on the battlefield well that's uh that's a great way to end the video my name is martin Duggan. catch you all on the next one cheers happy tanking bye bye